Hey, today we want to talk about light some more. We talked about light last time, but today we want to talk about electromagnetic radiation. Radiation is not the kind of the light you can't see with your eyes. There's the colors that you can see, and then there's colors well, that, well, that you can't see. And so today we want to talk about the colors that you can't see. So that's called electromagnetic radiation. All right, so electromagnetic radiation or spectrum beyond the visible light. Didn't that sound like some like, title for a movie? Maybe, maybe not. Well, the thing I think you want to understand first and foremost here is that light is a mixture of colors. So if you look at light, white light, it is a mixture of all of the colors. So if you look at my picture right here, I've got white light passing through a prism, and as it passes through a prism, it gives off and gives off the different colors of light. So as it gives off the different colors of light, I'm down here, that gives, uh, you get the, the colors, Roy G. Biv. Right, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So those are the colors that you get. So a prism demonstrates that white light is a mixture of the wavelengths. Now remember we learned last time that the difference between different colors of light is the different wavelengths. Red light, for example, would have a relatively long wavelength compared to um, um, violet light would have a shorter wavelength. All right, and that's called by the creation of the spectrum. Interestingly enough, second picture here, you can actually do the reverse. You can recombine a spectrum of colors and obtain white light back. That's pretty cool. So if you kind of look at the second picture here, what I've got is there's white light going through here. It separates into the colors, and then you put it back through a prism, and the colors recombine to make white light. So it kind of just illustrates that white light is a mixture of colors. So yeah, that's kind of cool, I think. All right. This is another way to illustrate that. As you kind of see here, we have the white light coming through, and then these are in the, these uh, uh, pieces of light are kind of from the photon model, and as they come through, they split up into the Roy G. Bibbs here. All right. But that's showing that light is like a particle, but it's actually more like a wave, hence the second picture, or animation actually, is that they come out in wavelengths. Notice here on this, this picture that the red light has a bigger wavelength, and the purple light has a smaller wavelength. That's on purpose. Now those wavelengths are not like the real wavelengths. The real wavelengths are much, 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 much shorter. Um, the uh, red light has a, a wavelength of 700 nanometers. And you remember we learned last time, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. And purple light is in the neighborhood of 400 nanometers. And that's 400 billionth of a meter. So it's a very small amount. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the spectrum some more. We've done this before, um, yeah. And we, we briefly chatted about this last time. Visible light here, we talked about 400 is the purple light and 700 is the red light. But again, there's other kinds of light that exists in the world besides what you can see, okay? And actually, we don't really use the term light. But we can, but it's the same thing, though. It's, um, so there's infrared. There's radar, and there's wave, uh, these are uh, FM, TV, shortwave, this is what we call radio waves. These are ones with large wavelengths, ultraviolet, shorter, x-ray, really short, and gamma rays, like, super, uber short. And you actually see a number down here. These numbers right here are their wavelengths, how long they are in a meter. So, for example, the FM radio is the length of about one meter. This is about a meter. So if you have one meter of light, then that's going to be kind of your FM radio station. And then you get, and these are, this is not like a linear scale. We would say this is a logarithmic scale or an exponential scale, actually. And they, the light here um, gets very, very short in terms of their wavelengths. And a gamma ray is very, very, very short. X-rays, of course, you've had that. Um, before. So what are the different kinds? Well, the first one is infrared I want to talk about briefly. This picture right here is a picture of Saturn um, in the infrared spectrum. Now, one of the problems with this is that you really can't see in the infrared spectrum, and so we recolor the image so it makes it look... You might have seen the heat signatures and stuff like that. Heat is kind of like infrared. Uh, but when they see heat signatures, you're not actually seeing it. We've recolored the wavelengths and made them kind of red, usually, to illustrate um, how hot and cold something is. Uh, maybe like in some movies like, I don't know, Predator or something like that. I think that he can see in the infrared. Some animals, by the way, can see infrared. I wonder what that color looks like because it's a color that we can't see, and it's like we only know the Roy G. Biv colors. What does it look like if somehow we were to have eyes that could see them, which we don't? Interesting thought. Um, ultraviolet light. Now, ultraviolet light, I want to go back here. 
ultraviolet right light is just the other side of purple, ultraviolet. So, okay, what's an ultraviolet light? Okay, this is a cool picture of the sun right here. And in this particular picture of the sun, they took some ultralight picture of the sun, and we get a picture. This was when there was a big explosion. In fact, you can read this um, little blurb about this particular picture. It's sort of a famous picture of the sun. Um, but the image was recorded in extreme ultraviolet light emitted by ionized helium, an element originally identified in the solar spectrum. So it's a very cool kind of picture, but they, you can take pictures uh, in the different colors of light, or the different uh, types of light, I should say, and as you take them in different types of light, you um, uh, then have to recolor them so that they can be visible to us, if that makes sense. But we can get amazing pictures if we can take pictures that are not necessarily in the visible spectrum. Okay, radio waves. This is a picture of some radio towers. Radio waves are the longest waves, the very long waves, and of course they're all around you. Um, you just have to turn the radio on and you could find uh, the radio waves. And they, they get turned into sound and such, but it's still just a light wave. So it's an interesting thing that we can, we can send information, uh, a, a radio station, through a wave. And that, uh, your cell phone, same thing. Okay. So that was the uh, radio waves that are over here on our spectrum. Okay. Now, energy can be carried by electromagnetic radiation. Now, you probably know this because if you stand out on a hot sunny day, if you're standing out on that hot sunny day, what do you notice? Well, you notice uh, that it's like warm or something, right? And so that's light that's hitting you, so you feel the energy, right? But it can be more specific than that. So each photon, now when we talk photon, remember, we talked about this earlier, that this is like a tiny little particle of light, a little, little uh, blurp of light. They have a wavelength, remember that, that symbol lambda, that carries the energy E. And so, of course, guess what? There's a mathematical equation. So E is equal to HC over lambda. Now H is something you haven't seen. C, of course, is the speed of light, right? Speed of light. I like that word, light speed. Oh, isn't that like a beam me up, Scotty? All right, and lambda is the wavelength, right? And this has to be in meters. And we have this new term we haven't seen before. It's called H. And H is called Planck's constant. Isn't that funny? Planck's constant. Mr. Planck, Max Planck was his name. We're not going to worry too much about the math of this. It's just a number. Okay? Notice the photon of short wavelength radiation carries more energy. So if you think about that, if this number right here, let's think mathematically, E equals HC, I'm going to put it over, divided by lambda. So if the number on the bottom of a fraction is small or short, then it has higher energy. It's kind of a reverse, isn't it? If this number is small, it makes this number big. Conversely, um, if you, this number is big, then you get low energy. So short wavelengths have high frequency, and they therefore have high energy. Okay, long wavelengths have low frequency and low energy. So if we go back to our picture, I have to click a few times, that would make gamma rays would have high energy. So you should label that on your spectrum because it's like really, really short, 10 to the negative 14th, that's point zero 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 bunch of zeros and a one. And then if we get over here to it, like the AM uh, stations, that's 10 to the 4th, that's 10,000 meters. So that's a really, really long wavelength. So long wavelengths equals low energy. Short wavelengths equals high energy. Okay? I've got to zip through the deal here. Okay.